What's up guys, what of course you're going to be see today is a sort of breakdown on what the no knight strategy is with regard to beating hard mode oryx. It's a very common strategy used by LFG groups and I've beaten oryx plenty of times using this method and the other method without which I'll discuss in a different video. And what I'll do today is break down the idiosyncrasies associated with the run as well as the run itself and the pros and cons it toward the end of the video associated with this strategy. Very first thing you're going to want to do is if you have a knight stalker hunter you're going to want to stand in the middle here, wait for the enemies to come in, and let him use his super to generate orbs. This is huge for anyone that needs their super, like, a, um, like say, a revive warlock, or especially if you have a bubble titan. It's you Generate orbs. It's, it's massive for your run. The very first thing you're going to want to do after that is assign, of course, your, your duties. You'd probably want to do this before the run starts. You'd want someone to be, obviously, your relic runner. Then what you'll do is assign your three platforms with the numbers one through three. Platform 1 will be the platform that Oryx slams his fist on in a second, so that's Platform 1. Then it goes counterclockwise. So 2 will be the platform directly in front of me, and I am Platform 3. Remember your number because it never changes throughout the fight, and if you mess up your number, you screw up the whole run for everyone. So don't mess that up. Uh, and it's important to keep this number in mind because your platforms change. It isn't always one set platform. The remaining two people will be on the opposite platform of Oryx. Those are your floaters or your DPS crew. Uh, in the bubble that I'm jumping into as you see right now though it's not a hundred percent needed you'd want at least one Titan with a blessings bubble that he would deploy when Oryx slams his fist on the platform I'll discuss why it's a blessings bubble shortly uh, before you begin as well the fight in general I mean uh, I'd highly recommend assigning four people to a blight detonation location for simplicity purposes uh, in the case, as you're going to see after I stagger Oryx in the video I was always responsible for detonating, detonating the front right blight from the perspective of empty entering the arena as the front oryx being the back. So as you'll see me jump down to the blight in the back. You can assign three other players to say the remaining ones. Front left, back left, back right. Uh, typically the, the three platformers that would uh, that would jump up to activate uh, the platforms would be responsible for three of those blights. And one of the guys up top in the bubble on the DPS crew would get the last blight. There is absolutely no confusion doing it this way because everyone knows exactly which one they have to go to and no issue and no issues going with this extra step. And the other thing too is uh, after you assign a blight, that would be your platform you run on. So I'm always responsible for the front right blight and I'd always run around this platform when Oryx shoots orbs. It's so easy. So little wipes I've done using this strategy. The alternative of course is that you can have each platform that you're responsible for jumping up to being the one that you're supposed to go get uh, the blight and detonate the blight with. The issue I have with that, and I've seen many times, is that the, the one guy on the DPS crew up top always runs to the wrong blight. You only end up getting three or he dies, and then it's just a disaster from there. And because the platforms change, it's always a different one. It's, it's a bit of a mess. Assigning platforms means no one ever gets confused. So as you've seen already through the first run, and you're about to see in the second run, the fight starts as normal. Each of the three platformers jump up in counterclockwise fashion. When you're on the platforms, as you're going to see in a second, you do not shoot ogres, throw grenades. You don't even look at them if you can. You try and stand further back and crouch, or even use the sit animation as I do. And the reason for that is you stay out of the ogre's sight line so he won't shoot at you. Your job is to wait for the runner to grab the relic. I know it can be kind of boring because you're not really doing anything, but it's the easiest way on this, trust me. When he does have the relic and he calls out that he has it, you'll jump up from your platform up to the Titan bubble with the sister platform, say, up here, as you see here. You wait for your runner to grab the aura and jump up and join you. When you're holding your platform, your DPS crew on top of the sister platform, as you've seen in the two runs already, damage the ogres and try to knock them down to at least about a quarter health, getting ready to kill right after you stagger them. If your DPS crew is extremely good at knocking down ogre health, to ideally using Touch of Malice and a Blessings Bubble, as I said earlier, the reason why you'd want that is because, as you see, if the Titan Bubble isn't there, or if your runner screws up and can't get up to the top in time, you can dump in and out of the Titan Bubble for Blessings and continually put max damage uh, from your Touch of Malice. And it prevents Oryx, as you've seen, from shooting at you and killing you if you're in the Titan Bubble. It just prevents you from getting killed. It's Titan Bubble makes things exponentially easier, though it isn't 100% necessary. The second he gets staggered, as you saw, you will all shoot and kill the Ogres. Try and kill the Ogres uh, in the direction that you will be jumping down 
to go and get the blight because i mean sometimes some people that are responsible for the front will kill the back ones and then the timing goes off so in the back right try to kill the elgar you're responsible for is what i'm basically saying when you kill them call out back ogres down and front ogres down you could take a few seconds here to clear ads if you wish and the reason for all this is sometimes back ogres might have more health than say front ogres so if the back o or the front ogres die first the timing between going down and jumping to go get your blight might be off between both sides say front and back which means the front crew would have a much uh, more difficult go of it trying to detonate the blights and get back before they explode so when say back ogres down front ogres down the second you hear front ogres down everybody go gets their blights you have some time the relic holder then right as uh, the ogres die will jump down from the sister platform into the middle and shoot orcs to keep his chest open when detonated run back to the middle wait for detonation repeat the cycle you will repeat the strategy four times total if you detonate all four bombs each time for a total of 16 to kill oryx otherwise if you mess up a blight or someone screws up and dies or something in the process you'll need a fifth run to get it done uh, like I said, in the previous two runs, unless you get them below half, you'll have to run around your platforms while Oryx dodges bombs at you, but uh, pick the same platform in the same area that you were responsible for killing the ogres. So I was back right. I'd always get the back right platform. Uh, after you knock them below half or two successful four blight detonated stages, you will go to the shade as you just saw I killed the shade and you'll see it one more time. Uh, after killing the shade, you repeat the strategy as usual. That's why the bubble is important as Oryx just shot at the bubble. Now, this seems like a complicated strategy, and almost certainly if it's a new crew doing this strategy, you're going to have tons of wipes until everyone figures out the exact timing and idiosyncrasies of the run. It's just going to happen. You have to accept it. Just be patient. There are some inherent huge pros to this strategy I'm going to discuss, though, as opposed to the regular strat, which is in a separate video I'll discuss. The pros to this strategy is it's extremely easy to kill Oryx if you're below 311 light using this strategy as opposed to the normal. The reason for the 311 is because uh, you no longer see the enemy's health bars as red or taking less damage after 311 light. Also, if you don't have great high level high damage weapons or you have some less than great teammates, all they have to do is jump up to a platform. They're not responsible for killing things. It's You make things a lot easier. You can, as long as he does his job and doesn't die, then it's, you can carry him through it. The strat basically, uh, other than... Uh, the DPS crew basically asks you to stay alive and that's basically it that's the biggest pro to this this strategy any damage phases can be done as a group or yeah any damage phase can be done as a group or by the two DPS guys up top so as long as as long as they stay alive and detonate the blights even lesser players can complete this raid in fact uh, one of the runs I had I think there was a 308 guy that doing this strategy we beat it with so it's you can carry lesser players through as long as they could stay alive Another pro, other than the one titan, which makes things a ton easier, but as you saw in our one run, isn't even a 100% necessity, you don't need a minimum number of a certain class. You can do this with six hunters as long as your hunters are good at staying alive and have good DPS and they're coordinated. Another pro, other than killing ogres and staggering orcs, you don't have to worry about anything else. So to emphasize my point earlier, stay alive and you will win. It's, it's that easy. Now, there are some cons that I'm going to discuss, of course. The cons, of course, is that it puts a ton of pressure on your Relic Runner, who will not have who will have adds and ogres targeting him the whole time. You can negate this if your DPS team focuses fire at the ogres to make sure that the ogres shoot at them instead of the Relic Runner. But if they're putting out too much DPS or not enough, ogres will start to target your runner. On top of that... Sometimes when crouching on the platforms, ogres will still target and kill you anyway, and there's nothing you can do about it. It doesn't matter how skilled you are, it happens sometimes. DPS teams are meant for distractions here, but a good DPS team means ogres won't even know you're there, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. Sometimes knights will, uh, again, be in blights as you arrive, or will have taken one out if your team doesn't kill ogres quickly or in sequence correctly. And on that... While detonating blights, sometimes knights will already be near you or start slicing you basically when you go to detonate the blight, which means you'll have to retreat early or you'll have to go and do another run, making your chance of screwing up higher. 
The other thing too, ogre movement and blight locations can be random. Because you're not killing ogres, it means they're constantly moving, so you don't know exactly where the ogres or your blight will be. One short blight spot means you're going to have to take your time getting to the one blight spot of someone else, which can cause some trouble. Uh, the timing on where to go to detonate blights can be off at this because of the above point, and sometimes teammates insist on killing enemies before going for blights. Make sure there's communication uh, on killing enemies and going for blights. Ultimately, as you're going to see in a second here, though, as we kill him, whichever strat you choose between this and the normal strat, there's going to be pros and cons to both. If you're in constant communication with your team and everyone keeps an open mind to, say, implementing a, a new strategy on the go, as long as you communicate it and everyone is on the same page, either strat can work. If you have one in mind, let me know which one works best for you. Um, and that's about it. See you later.